Okay, this video shows you how I did most of the purple iris. You can see they're all framed up. Um, using three shades of green, a light, a middle and a dark. And as you can see, sort of kick off using a thick nib. And the thick nibs cover a lot of area, a lot of surface quite quickly. Um, so I'm putting on the darkest one, Viridian. Uh, then a medium shade, which is called Fern Green. And if there is any lighter shade that you see on there, that'll be Spring Green. But I think at the moment for the interior bit that I'm doing there, you can see I'm just using Viridian and I've just used Fern Green and just using lots of water. Then I go in with the tissue and I blot it because I want the colours to have a really, really kind of soft, almost gauzy, soft focus kind of uh, look to them. Nothing too harsh. So then when I get into the main background, I do exactly the same kind of thing, laying down some nice green Viridian there and then I'm going to use some Fern Green. And also you see me use a little bit of spring green on this one. Nothing too much. And I'm just sort of like splattering the markers in there. You know, not going for a completely even covering with the colours. Just enough that when I add the water, I get lots of nice colour running around on the paper. Which is what you can see happening now. Only issue I had with this paper was it seemed to have some kind of a sort of coating. And as a result, you can see some of the markers have actually stained the paper. So when I've added the water and I've blotted everything towards the end as you can see that it's dried you can see that some of the marker lines that I put down have kind of streaked and you can still see their lines underneath uh, the watercolor it's not something that I really wanted to happen but uh, sometimes it's like that you get a paper and that's the effect that you have you know uh, you can't always tell how each paper is going to uh, react and um, no I didn't do a tester beforehand on a scrap bit of paper which I probably should have done. So going into the the flower now as you can see I've already done a bit of it um, using mainly three purples. I've used a bit of blue for dark shading in the background and here's where I got a bit of a surprise because I used both the thick and the thi thin nibs on uh, Dusky Plum which is the colour you can see I'm using and yet you should be able to see that the colour from the thick nib was quite darker and slightly richer in colour than the thin nib and I hadn't noticed this about the markers before not necessarily a bad thing but it wasn't something I was quite prepared for so I put on the other two colours as well so you've got a, a little bit of cranberry and a little bit of mauve on there as well so again I'm using three colours a light, a medium and a dark and then I go in with a much smaller brush this time and what I'm trying to do is move the colours around but I'm not trying to blend them as much as I did with the background. I want this to be almost a bit, I want it to be streaky. I want some of the lines to show because that's what the flower actually looked like. It had these kind of little creases and little veins within the flower and I wanted that to show up. So I decided to use a little less water, just enough to be able to move the colour around but so that it would appear streaky and have some of the lines of the markers in the background. And that's what you can see uh, I'm trying to do at the moment. Just keep working it about. Leave some little white bits in you should be able to see as well. Little white highlights. And sort of exploit the, the fact that this paper did streak a little bit. And did show the marker uh, lines up a little bit. Instead of um, you know getting frustrated by it. 